I'm going to show you how to instantly improve the quality of your renderings in just a couple clicks. So you can go from something like this to this. So let's get started. So the first thing you need to do is render out an image and you're going to want to go over to the AI post processor. Okay. So if you're not at the screen, just make sure you hit source, double click your rendering and I'll put it in the preview. Generally speaking, when people are using this tool, they think to go use the AI enhancer, which makes plenty of sense. I mean, the whole idea is to preserve your rendering quality and then this does a pass to improve it. But I actually found a secret tool that actually does a better job. So this is the raw render and then this is the enhancer. So as you can see, it's not doing a bad job at all, right? It looks, it looks fine. It's just bringing out some texture and everything. It's making the grass look a little bit nicer, the vegetation a little bit better but I really want some more wow factor to it. So check this out. So this is the improved method. Look at that. Look at how much more realistic the grass looks versus the other option. So to kind of illustrate this, let me show you in Photoshop and then I'll show you exactly how to do this. So this is the AI enhancer on. Let's go, let's go over here to the tree, right? I'm gonna toggle this on and off. So before, after. So minor, minor enhancements, you know, we'll look at the shadows. Okay. And we'll look, we'll look here and we're getting that nice texture. This is the hack I'm talking about. Sure. It's adding some artifacts, but that we can actually fix very easily, but look at the vegetation. Look right here. Look at how much better that looks. Like the grass has got all these leaves, all this extra detail. We've got, this being completely improved. Look at that. So it does tweak a little bit of the textures, but I'm going to show you a little workaround to that. So to do this, all you have to do is go to T5 and the setting is actually under style transfer. So it's unintuitive because you would think a style transfer is for you to just switch the style of a rendering. But if you go to realistic over here, and you don't click anything, you actually sit right here on style transfer from reference, and you change the settings from 0.6 to 0.1 and structure matching weight to one, what it'll do is it'll grab this like fancy realistic style that, you know, D5 renders probably trained um, this AI model on, I don't know, millions of photos or renderings, who knows? And it'll apply that little flare on top of your rendering. And then one, the structure is going to preserve the actual architectural details of your project. So it's just giving you a nice little polish pass. Um, but just overhauling like the shadows and the vegetation and the reflections, like just to go back, like, look at the reflections here. Okay. I'm going to toggle on and off. Like, look at how much better they get. Um, so overall it's looking much better. And then in terms of like some of the materials and textures changing, what I do is actually when I export out the renderings, I'll get a material mask ID, and then I can basically merge the AI enhanced one which is this version and the style transfer on the parts that don't work as well. Um, that didn't work out that weren't as realistic and just a simple trick just like that gives you incredible results. And I feel like it doesn't take that much extra time. So if I were to just, you know, merge it and just to show you the, uh, the material masks IDs, what I'm talking about is under image, you would go over here to channels and you just toggle this on material ID and then you bring that into Photoshop and then you can grab, you know, the pieces that should be uh, removed or not. But I think it just like doesn't make sense not to use it in, in my opinion. So let's go through all these. The first one that I have here, this is the spring profile. So what this is, if I go back to D5 and I go back to my AI enhancer, that is actually just using this profile right here, spring. So this is actually using a spring reference image set. And I actually noticed this is the weakest. So look at that. So if I toggle this on and off compared to the one I was just talking about, like, look at that. You lose all the detail. It looks very, very, I don't know, kind of weird with all these like lines and it just doesn't look super, super realistic. Um, the textures are a little washed out here. And that's the original. So that, you know, it's definitely an option, but I found the reference to be so much better. And then to just show you what the mask would look like, go over here, channels, material ID. All right, cool. Now that that's baked, I'm going to go over to Photoshop, 
grab this. And this is what I'm talking about. So if you're saying, oh, okay, well, I don't like that it changed my bricks here. All you would do is select color range, grab your mask, okay? Select that, that's all been selected. And if you go to the the good realistic, you know, hack one, and before you mask it, you're gonna wanna invert it. So if you invert your selection, it's gonna select the outside. So then when you mask it, everything else changes except this selected area. So now the idea is like, I've got the AI enhanced version and I've got my own version on top of it, uh, which is kind of nice. So you can play with masks um, to kind of choose what you want and what you don't want. Again, you could either invert or not invert. So let me just show you that. So let me disable, uh, let me delete that one, go back here and we'll do select color range, grab this guy and we'll mask this. So you can see that. And now if I just did the invert, just as a comparison and do select, reselect, invert, that's control shift I, and there you go. And now you're letting in whatever you want. So it's really not that difficult to control what aspects should be brought in or not. And if there's any mistakes, it's a mask. So you could easily just paint away uh, what should be there and what shouldn't be there. So there you go. So pretty handy trick. Anyways, if you really like this tip, I'm um, just putting it out there. I'm hosting a free webinar this Saturday, 1 p.m. Eastern time. It's all about how to improve your renderings. I'm going to go over my, my workflow, my formula uh, to improve renderings. Again, totally free. If you're interested in signing up, there's a link in the description and the pinned comment. As always, if you have any questions, drop a comment and like and subscribe. Helps the channel out and I'll see you next time.